While the giants of the space industry are focused on heavy lift rockets, Rocket Lab has a once in a generation chance to lock down the small launch market. A clear example is what just happened recently. Besides SpaceX, the US Space Force also awarded Rocket Lab contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars, choosing them over other providers to carry out a critical national security mission, something Blue Origin simply can't do. So, what is that mission exactly? And what does it reveal about Rocket Lab's position compared to Blue Origin moving forward? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Back in November, the entire space community was buzzing when Blue Origin successfully launched New Glenn on its second flight. This is a massive heavy lift rocket, and the booster came down for a picture-perfect landing on a drone ship at sea, straight out of a Hollywood movie. The mission, called Escapade, carried two advanced twin NASA satellites heading all the way to Mars, designed to study the planet's magnetosphere. Sounds impressive, right? A huge rocket cutting-edge reusability. A deep space mission, Jeff Bezos definitely had reasons to be proud. But here's the twist. Despite all that, Blue Origin only earned about $20 million for this launch. That's a surprisingly modest number for a heavy-lift rocket. The reason? This was essentially a discounted flight, with NASA helping fast-track New Glenn certification. Now, fast forward to December 18th, 2025. Rocket Lab opened the launch window for Electron, their small, lightweight rocket, launching from Wallops Island, Virginia. This flight was for a U.S. Space Force mission called STPS-30, nicknamed Don't Be Such a Square. The payload? Just four experimental disk sats, flat disk-shaped test satellites. No Mars, no deep space, nothing flashy. And yet, this single Electron launch was worth $14.4 million. Let that sink in. A tiny, small-lift rocket, flying a short national security mission, earned only five to six million dollars less than New Glenn's Mars mission. And honestly, that makes sense. Right now, the U.S. Space Force is being heavily funded as national security becomes a top priority, while NASA is dealing with budget tightening and has to count every dollar. If Blue Origin is paying attention, seeing Rocket Lab pull in nearly the same money with a much smaller rocket, yeah, that one probably stings a little. Going a bit deeper into this mission, those flat disc-shaped satellites, stacked like pancakes, were developed by the Aerospace Corporation, with funding support from NASA. These disc sats are a pretty unconventional design. Each one is about one meter in diameter, thin and wide, giving them plenty of surface area for solar panels and antennas. Thanks to their shape, they experience lower atmospheric drag, which makes them ideal for operating long-term in very low Earth orbit or VLEO, below 300 kilometers, without rapidly losing altitude. They're also equipped with electric propulsion, allowing them to maneuver efficiently and adjust their orbits with high precision. During launch, the satellites are stacked inside a dispenser, then released one by one once they're in space. For this mission, Electron first inserts the payloads into a circular orbit at around 550 kilometers. From there, the satellites will test orbital maneuvering, the deployment system, and controlled orbit changes as part of the experiment. Actually, the $14.4 million contract was signed back in 2024 under the U.S. Space Force's Space Test Program, which focuses on testing emerging technologies with potential military applications. And there's one more milestone here. This flight marks Electron's 20th launch in 2025, setting a new annual record for Rocket Lab. A big milestone and honestly, a well-earned one. Of course, when you put this next to SpaceX, it still looks pretty small. Just recently, Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, shared a post celebrating a huge milestone, even though SpaceX technically didn't hit its original target. In his words, congrats to the entire SpaceX team for achieving 165 launches. While we originally set out for 170, we actually revised the manifest to 165 this summer, based on business and manifest needs. And yes, that's 165 Falcon 9 launches in a single year. Keep in mind, Falcon 9 is a medium-lift rocket, so compared to that, 20 launches of a small rocket like Electron? Well, it's respectable, but let's be honest, it's still modest. That said, it's still more than Blue Origin. Even though Blue Origin has two rockets, New Shepard and New Glenn, they still haven't launched a single satellite for themselves. However, they are on the verge of a very meaningful milestone. 
Blue Origin is preparing for NS-37, a New Shepard mission that could make history as the first spaceflight carrying a person in a wheelchair. The launch is scheduled for December 19, 2025, with an official target of December 18, though it may slip to net due to weather. The launch window opens around 8.30 a.m. CST. The person making history is Mikhaila Michi Benthaus, a German aerospace engineer working at the European Space Agency. After a spinal cord injury from a mountain biking accident in 2018, she's been using a wheelchair ever since, but she never gave up on space. She's also been a strong advocate for accessibility in aerospace. The flight will last about 11 minutes, with a few minutes of weightlessness and a beautiful view of Earth. If all goes as planned, Mishi will become the first wheelchair user to reach the edge of space. So, yeah, Blue Origin still can't launch a satellite for itself, but at least they're about to check off a different kind of milestone. Not orbital, not operational, not revenue generating, but historic in its own way. All right, back to Rocket Lab. In reality, Don't Be Such a Square is just one of many contracts Rocket Lab has secured with the U.S. Space Force. For example, Rocket Lab has been on-ramped into NSSL Phase 3, Lane 1, the National Security Space Launch Phase 3 program. This is a massive framework worth up to $5.6 billion shared among selected providers. Under this program, Rocket Lab plans to use Neutron, the medium lift rocket they're close to completing, to compete for major national security missions starting in fiscal year 2026. And that's not all. Last year, Rocket Lab also landed a huge $515 million contract with the Space Development Agency under the U.S. Space Force. In this deal, Rocket Lab acts as the prime contractor, responsible for designing, building, and operating 18 military satellites. These satellites will form part of Tranche 2, Transport Layer Beta, a constellation focused on military communications and threat detection, supporting the Pentagon's next-generation space architecture. So, this isn't just about launching rockets anymore. Rocket Lab is steadily positioning itself as a full-stack national security space company, from launch to satellites to on-orbit operations. All of these contracts are backed by something Rocket Lab is exceptionally strong at, satellite manufacturing. And honestly, in this area, they're not far behind SpaceX at all. More recently, Rocket Lab has built out an entire family of spacecraft buses designed specifically for mass production. Right now, they're sitting on a backlog of more than 40 satellites already under construction. And then there's one of Rocket Lab's brightest stars, Electron. Electron is a compact, highly efficient, small lift rocket that's perfectly tuned for the small sat market. It's a two-stage vehicle, standing about 18 meters tall with a 1.2 meter diameter. The first stage is powered by nine 3D printed Rutherford engines, while the second stage uses a single vacuum optimized Rutherford. Electron can deliver up to around 300 kilograms to low earth orbit with extremely precise orbital insertion. And that precision is exactly why customers keep coming back. A dedicated Electron launch typically costs around $7.5 to $15 million. Sure, that's more expensive than SpaceX's rideshare missions, but in return, customers get something Falcon 9 just can't offer. Their own orbit, flexible launch timing, and no waiting around or sharing risk with dozens of other payloads like on a transporter mission. Compared to the big players, Electron really stands out in responsiveness. That means fast launches, short turnaround times, sometimes just days between flights, and a fully dedicated mission profile. And that's exactly what the military wants right now, especially for rapid tech demonstrations or urgent deployments, which the Space Force is heavily pushing. SpaceX completely dominates medium and heavy lift, no question. Their rideshare is cheap, but it comes with long wait times and shared orbits. Blue Origin, on the other hand, is going all in on a massive heavy lift with New Glenn. Using that to launch small sats would be pure overkill, and they still don't offer a regular, lightweight rideshare service anyway. That's why Electron has allowed Rocket Lab to dominate the niche of dedicated, responsive small launch, and why they keep landing national security contracts like the one we're seeing today. While Rocket Lab's future is starting to look pretty bright, the outlook for Blue Origin in the heavy lift launch market is shaping up to be a far tougher fight, and that fight is directly against SpaceX. New Glenn, the heavy-lift rocket Jeff Bezos has poured years of effort into, 
is inevitably going head-to-head -head with Starship, Elon Musk's absolute monster of a vehicle. On paper, New Glenn looks solid. Over 90 meters tall, a reusable booster, a clean booster landing on NG2, and it's now moving through certification to compete for a billion-dollar U.S. Space Force contracts. But here's the real question. How do you actually compete with this? Because Starship is basically playing in a different league. SpaceX is closing in on true full reusability. Not just the booster, but the ship itself returning to Mechazilla and flying again and again. If Starship scales the way SpaceX expects, launch costs could drop to around 10 to $20 million per flight. By comparison, New Glenn can currently only reuse the booster. The upper stage is still expendable in the early flights, and estimated launch costs remain much higher, with some estimates putting them in the $100 to $200 million range at the start, even though Blue Origin says those numbers will come down over time. And then there's raw capability. Starship can deliver roughly 150 to 200 tons to LEO in a fully reusable configuration. New Glenn is closer to 45 tons. That's almost five times less than its main competitor. So, yes, Blue Origin is clearly trying. They have NSSL, Phase 3 contracts, NASA as a customer, and some undeniably impressive landings. But if they want to truly challenge SpaceX and heavy lift, they'll need to prove three things lower costs, higher launch cadence, and full reusability, fast. Otherwise, New Glenn risks becoming the second best option in this race, permanently. What do you think? Can Blue Origin turn the tables, or will SpaceX continue to dominate the heavy lift game? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Now, for a more recent update, Jared Isaacman is officially the new NASA. On December 17, 2025, the U.S. Senate confirmed Jared Isaacman as the head of NASA with a 67 to 30 vote. This is a pretty big deal because for the first time in decades, NASA is being led by someone from the private sector, not a career government official or a traditional NASA astronaut.